Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my lesson is on experimental and theoretical probability. Our objectives today are that you will find relative frequencies, that you will use experimental probabilities to make predictions, you will use theoretical probabilities to find quantities, and we're going to compare experimental and theoretical probabilities. So the essential question I have for you today, and what I can hope you can answer by the end of our lesson, is how are relative frequency and probability related? This is what I'd like you focused on during our lesson today. So first, let's talk about relative frequency, which is also experimental probability. So this happens when you conduct an experiment. The relative frequency or experimental probability of an event is the fraction of a percent the time of the time the event occurs. So we talk about relative frequency and we have the number of times that the desired event occurred out of the total number of times you conducted the experiment. We could also refer to this as the probability of the event occurring during an experiment. And it's how many times the event occurred out of the total number of times the experiment was performed. So you can see that probability of an event occurring through an experiment and relative frequency are the same. So we're gonna find the relative frequency here. We rolled a die 36 times and I collected the data. So I'm gonna roll my number cube 36 times and I'm gonna make a relative frequency table. So this is how frequently I rolled a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. And I collected my data and I organized it in a table. Now I wanna know what was the relative frequency of rolling a four. So I'm gonna go down to my data table and I'm gonna use my relative frequency. So the number of times the event occurred was seven. So my numerator is seven and I conducted 36 trials. 36 times I rolled the number cube. If you added all these values up in the number of times column, it would total 36. So relative frequency is more meaningful if we write it as a decimal and then as a percent. So we can tell somebody that 19.4% of the time I rolled a four in my experiment. All right, now it's your turn. I would like you to use the same data table to find the relative frequency of rolling a six. Please pause and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So I'm gonna go down to my data table and the number of times I rolled a six was six. So six out of 36 times equals one out of six. Now coincidentally, this is our theoretical probability. So if you haven't watched my probability video talking about just simple probability and what happens in theory, I would go ahead and do that. So in theory, I would have expected to roll a six one in six times. And in this experiment, that's what happened. So writing it as a decimal and then converting it to a percent, I get 16.7% of the time that I rolled the die, I got a six. So you would hope that you would have this relative frequency for each of them. And you can see that I'm close. If I conducted these trials far more times, you would find that your experimental probability would get closer and closer to your theoretical probability. All right, your turn. I would like you to look over this data and answer the question. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So I rolled the number cube 500 times and I collected the data. And I'm asking, what is the experimental probability of rolling an even number? So I've highlighted the even numbers in the table and how frequently those numbers were rolled. So we're gonna add, this is the probability of rolling an even number. We're gonna add 68, 62, and 123, and we get 253. And I know I could add this whole column up, but they told us in the question that there were 500 times the experiment was conducted. Divide, and then write it as a percent. So 50.6% of the time, I rolled an even number. Now let's compare this to theoretical probability. In theory, I would expect that half of these rolls were even. Look how close we got. All right, so now we can use an experiment to make a prediction. So we record the number of rainy days in July. We collected the data and that qualifies as an experiment. The data we collected show that it rained five days in July. If this pattern continued, 
how many days would you expect it to rain in August? Gave you a calendar so that you can see the total number of days in July and in August is the same. So we would expect that it would rain the same amount in August, five out of 31, if the pattern continued, which is 16% of the time. So 16.1% would be our expected relative frequency using our data we collected. All right, let's talk about theoretical probability. And that's what we would expect to happen under fair and perfect circumstances. So when we flip a coin and it lands at heads, we'd expect that to happen one out of two times or 50% of the time. When we roll a six and you roll a die, we would expect that to happen one out of six or 16.7% of the time. So this is in theory. We didn't collect any data on this. We're just saying theoretically in a perfect world, with a fair coin and a fair number cube, meaning it's not weighted to be a trick coin and it's not a different die, it's got one numbers one through six on it, this is what we'd expect to happen. So we rolled a die 5,000 times and we wanna know what is the theoretical probability of rolling an odd number. So in theory, what do you believe should happen? Please pause, answer the question and come back when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So notice I didn't give you any data this time. So the probability of rolling an odd would be half the time. So we would expect that we would roll an odd 2,500 times out of the 5,000, which is half or 50% of the time. So that's the difference between experimental and theoretical probability. I hope you enjoyed our lesson today. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and sign up for subscriptions and come back to learn more about the magic of math. Have a great day.